Hi Foodtubers, I'm Nathan Outlaw and I'm a seafood chef and today I'm going to show you how to make scallop tartare with pickle beetroot and a bacon dressing. The three things together are fantastic, the saltiness from the bacon, the lovely raw scallops and the beetroot together, perfect. The first thing we need to do is beetroot. I'm going to just use the red stuff, so I've got some here that's already in boiled. Let that cool down, peel the outside off and we're going to dice it up. Make sure you give these a good wash, just peel the cooked beetroot. So apart from actually grilling some bacon, that's the only cooking that's involved in this dish, so it's a nice quick dish. Cut this beetroot as uh, small or as big as you like. I like to cut it quite small. I'm going to show you how I like it. OK, so that's what you're looking for, that sort of size beetroot. And you get nice fingers like that. Now you need to make the marinade. We need a, a shallot, a couple of cloves of garlic as well. In fact, these are quite big ones, so just one. Red wine vinegar and some sherry vinegar as well. A little bit of thyme. You can use any other hard herbs, but for me, thyme's really, really good with the combination of everything. Clover garlic, nice thin slices down. If you wanted to, you can just crush the garlic, but I like to have it a little bit finer. The finer the garlic is, the better. Shallot, so we're just going to take off any of the, the pieces like that are a bit woody, they're not going to be very nice. Slice down, keep the root on. That way you'll keep the whole thing together and it won't spread all over the board. You want to run the knife through the actual uh, shallots, the garlic and the thyme, just so that it's a bit smaller, so that when you're eating it, you don't get big lump of any of them ingredients. OK, so we're going to take half of that in with the, uh, in the beetroots. If you've got any left over, save that. It's perfect to just throw into a sauce or into your stock pot. Now we're going to add some red wine vinegar, about a tablespoon, and equal with sherry. The difference between these two vinegars, this one's a little bit sweeter and it's got more oakiness to it. That's again another tablespoon. And the red wine vinegar is just acidity, but it's got that lovely sort of red wine tannin to it as well. So we're going to add a little bit more salt, a touch of pepper. We've got some lovely rapeseed oil here. This is a British dish, so I use rapeseed oil. The nuttiness from the rapeseed works great with the earthiness from the beetroot. Give that a little mix. That's the marinated beetroot dressing for the actual scallop dish. Ideally, you want to keep it like this for a couple of hours and it just softens the ingredients that are in there. OK, so the next thing we need to do is make some uh, mayonnaise. And the base of a mayonnaise is always your eggs. So you need to separate the eggs and get the yolks out. Two egg yolks. You can use vinegar or you can use lemon, but we're going to use lemon this time. Works much better with the scallops. A little bit of mustard as well. You can use any, any sort of mustard. Not too much, though, because it's very, very strong. Just about that much. Give it a good whisk. Olive oil's really strong, so by the time I've made the mayonnaise, it'll overpower everything that's in the dish. So I'm going to use something like this, which is sunflower oil, just a real sort of basic, almost flavourless oil. It'll just give us the body for the mayonnaise. So start yourself off slow. And once you've got that emulsion, you can go faster and you can add more. You can do it in a machine, but it's much more fun doing it like this. OK, so what you're looking for is that sort of texture, the mayonnaise, you can see. Nice and thick, almost like a thick custard, it looks like. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. And that's it. So that mayonnaise will be fine in the fridge for maybe two or three days. Now for the star of the show, the scallops. These are hand-dived scallops from Scotland, but I've kept the shells because I want to present them in there, but also you've got these lovely scallop meat. But basically you're looking for it to be nice and bright, fresh. The rows need to be intact as well, especially if you're buying them live. One thing that's very important when you're doing raw dishes is you make sure everything is really, really clean. You want your board to be clean, your knives to be clean, your hands to be really clean. So the scallops I use are always hand dive scallops, which is a good thing. It's obviously a sustainable way of fishing. I'm going to cut these scallops almost like a dice. You can cut it into a slice if you want. And I think it just eats really, really well that way. OK, so that's all the scallop meat there. So you've got some more shallot, you've got an apple, and we've got some chives. So we're just going to chop some fresh shallot. You only need about half of this, nice and fine. The ends of the chives sometimes are a little bit tough, so I just remove them. As I said before, I don't chuck anything away, so it all gets used for something in the end. And then we've got some apple. We're going to take half of the apple to bring the whole thing a bit of freshness, a little bit of zing. Now, this is a Cox's apple, but a Braeburn um, or, a, or a Granny Smith will work really well. So same sort of size as the scallops and the beetroot already. The last ingredient I'm going to put in with the scallops is is a gherkin. I think these are fantastic. So one of these is going in there as well. I, obviously, I haven't seasoned it with salt yet, but I'm going to use bacon instead as my seasoning. Everybody knows bacon's great. So what I've got here is some bacon that has been crisped up. This is a cold dish. Fat sort of solidifies and it's not very nice to eat. So make sure you crisp the bacon right up. Really get rid of all that fat. Chop it down almost like the sort of size of rock salt. OK, so we take all these ingredients and add them to the scallops. And then you've got a little bit of gherkin going in there as well. Just be careful with the bacon, not too much. So we've got that lovely mayonnaise that we've already made. You just want to bind it, you don't want too much. One, maybe one and a half tablespoons of, of the actual mayonnaise. 
mix the whole thing together. At this stage, you really, really need to taste it. Make sure you've got the balance of everything right. I think it needs a little bit more bacon. Just a little bit more bacon. I think you're missing something if you don't try scallops raw. They're a fantastic protein. They've got a lovely, sweet softness to them. I'm ready to serve now. This is ready. So I'm going to have a quick clean down, and I'll show you how to plate it up. OK, so we're going to plate these up now. I've kept the shells, so I think they're a really nice way to present these dish. And then we're just going to split this mix between four shells. This is enough for two people for a starter, so we're going to have uh, two shells each. You could do this with a really good fresh salmon. Brill's actually a very good fish that's available. OK, so we've got the scallops in the, in the dishes. This is the pickled beetroot that we did earlier on. I'm going to have to put that on there as well. And what that beetroot does when you've left it to marinate, it produces this lovely, lovely sort of dressing at the bottom. A few wedges of lemon. You use lime if you want to. I think lemon's perfect. Then we've got some uh, sourdough that we just toasted. I'll tell you what, if I come around to your house and you serve me up that, I'll be very, very happy. All we need to do now is to taste it. Oh, and the sweetness of the scallops, the acidity, the earthiness from the beetroot, the lovely freshness from the apple, the chives, the vinegar, the lemon. You get right at the back there, the bacon. It is pretty good. So there you go, food tubers. There's my uh, scallops tartare with pickled beetroot and uh, hey, hey, bacon seasoning. <laughs> Don't let get DJ Barbecue get his hands on them. You get your hands on them. Try this recipe. Leave your comments below. Tell, tell me what you want me to cook on FoodTube and I'll try and do it. Thanks a lot.